Um, Good morning everybody and we're delighted to, to be able to present on our project proposal aligning teaching and learning across the technological sector. Um, this proposal is, has been submitted on behalf of the Learning Innovation Network and is supported by THEA which is the Technological Higher Education Association which has recently replaced the IOTI, Institutes of Technology of Ireland group. My name is Nuala Harding, I'm from the Athlone Institute of Technology and I'd like to invite my colleagues to introduce themselves. My name is Gina Newland, I'm from the Institute of Technology, Carlo. Hi, I'm Helen Murphy from Woodford Institute of Technology. Hello, I'm Dr. McRae from the Lever Institute of Technology. Hi, I'm Maureen McGuire from the Dundalk Institute of Technology. So just by way of background, the Learning Innovation Network was established in 2006 with SIF funding, Strategic Innovation Funding, and it was specifically geared towards the Institute of Technology sector. IOTs are teaching in intensive institutes, and our key objective at the time was to scope the parameters of a professional development programme. But as you can see, we went far beyond that. We were given a second cycle of funding under SIF2, and we've now, we now come under the auspices of THEA. Um, also, uh, we're chaired by um, an academic registrar, and we contribute as the learning and teaching network for that group. Um, so as part of our work, we developed a flexible pathway to a postgraduate diploma award. And in addition to that, we've developed a variety of supports, um, APD um, opportunities and, and symposia, etc. for the sharing of good practice in learning and teaching. So, in relation to our partners, as you can see, Athlone is at the centre of everything. <laughs> Uh, literally and etc. Um, so we would have validated the postgraduate diploma award on behalf of the sector and in addition to that our um, modules were, were shared across to other institutes as well who didn't have that capacity so we went through a process of capacity building. Other partners such as Waterford and Dundalk prior to uh, 2011 had, had established their own master's programmes and in addition to that, Carlo, for example, would have contributed to the postgraduate diploma and also developed their own MALT programme. And then, uh, for example, AIT and Dundalk would have assisted uh, Letterkenny IT in the development of their own master's programme and contributed modules there. In addition, we have some supporting partners from Sligo IT, GMIT, um, IADT, Marianne is here today, and also from LIT, and they would come under AIT in that their modules have either been developed in AIT and have been shared, or, or else they have developed other modules, uh, for example in student ed learning or in RPL, which are now also coming under our, our postgraduate diploma. So in relation to a rationale for our, our proposal, we have all evidenced um, our, and observed the transformation that can occur with sta among staff when they undertake accredited uh, professional training. Uh, and in particular, I think one of the key transformations that happens is when they cross the threshold and become students because then they start engaging from a student perspective and they're seeing the issues around things like assessment, dealing with technology, etc. And so um, that's a really key thing for us. And obviously our proposal is underpinned by current stra strategic policy documents, particularly in relation to flexible learning and also in relation to competence, etc. I'm going to hand you over to Gina now, who's going to continue and focus on rationale. Thanks very much, Neil. Um, so the broad aim of like, and the rationale of this particular project is to interpret the professional development framework within the context of our existing um, accredited provision. So we're looking at typology number four in the um, professional development activities. Um, and we want to examine and address the, these prof uh, professional development needs under a reflective and very evidence-based approach, which is the approach we've always taken under the LIN modules and is also mirrored then within the framework. So our key objective is to interpret existing provision. Um, we've been doing this, it's a really exciting time for us because as new outline, we've been doing this since 2004. 
Uh, we've got very good experience in it, but this would allow us the opportunity to do to structure and align our provision against the framework in a very consistent, coherent manner across the entire sector. Um, what we want to do is we want to map the existing provision against the, provision, or the professional development framework. So that would initially involve a mapping <laughs> exercise using a, a potentially a matrix of looking at wh what we're actually offering now and how does it fit against the framework. And really what we're talking about is bringing the framework to the fore so that all future development then in this area would essentially map initially against the framework. Um, this would allow us, uh, again, a, a very coherent st structure for the um, accredited professional development across the entire sector. So we are conscious of RPL and we're conscious that we already have some level nine modules in RPL on offer in Letterkenny IT and also in Waterford IT. But we want to explore how we might develop these so that we could offer them out to the other colleges and institutions in the sector. Uh, this is a very important part of recognition of um, professional development and later for the framework. Um, so it will be very important for us to explore this. We're going to hopefully use the National Forum collaboration space. Um, we're conscious that the, um, the RPL network is already there and present and we'd like to collaborate with them on that. And I suppose, additionally, we want to align provision against the digital capacity framework. And we're very conscious of the importance of developing di digital capacity. Um, in all of our modules, we don't just offer TEL modules, we also offer everything, all our modules are kind of delivered using um, either blended approach or taking kind of um, into account um, technology when we're designing, developing, assessing. So we're very conscious of using digital um, capacity um, in order to enhance what we are, our, our suite of offerings. We're conscious as well that um, one of our um, one of our partners is also involved in Project One proposal, um, which is looking at an online um, forum for managers, and we thought, well, maybe that would offer another kind of collection to our suite of offerings. So I'm now going to pass you over to Helen, who's going to go through the accredited provision that we offer to date. Thank you. Um, okay, um, just in terms of, I suppose, one question that we might be asked is um, how can so many uh, institutions have a core philosophy? And uh, we felt that um, maybe putting the Lynn values um, up here and um, uh, just, ju I, I won't go through them one by one, but uh, one of the tasks and one of the um, areas that we will be looking to collaborate on is looking at those Lynn values which underpin the work of this network since 2006. Uh, Values such as learner-centeredness, um, I think uh, authenticity and fairness and equity and uh, collaboration uh, are very, very important to us. We've taken the framework's values as uh, espoused in the, the new <coughs> national strategy and uh, part of this exercise will be us working within the value system that we have and looking at how that is aligned to, to the framework. Just um, to give you a sense, and Nula and Gina have talked about our experience base across the partner institutions. This experience goes back to 2004, so we've built up, you know, 12, 13 years of experience in the design of these professional development programs at postgraduate level for people, um, staff, academic staff, and indeed support staff um, working in higher education. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to go through each program, but I think you can see there it's um, predominantly uh, level nine postgraduate programs um, focusing on learning, teaching, pedagogy in higher education, and as well as full award programs, many institutions have special, special purpose awards or minor awards. So we have de-aggregated or disaggregated some of these major awards um, to, um, I suppose, make professional development opportunities attractive um, to people who can build it up over time. And certainly across all of our institutions, uh, many of our colleagues have um, been building up credits that they can do so as part of their kind of own professional development. Um, and just in terms of, I mean, um, impact, and uh, I think two points here are relevant uh, to this presentation. Impact in terms of maybe the numbers of people and the numbers of 
uh, learners, students that we've had uh, across the partner institutions. I mean, there, there's almost a thousand students, if you like, or a thousand graduates uh, between major awards, full MA programs and postgraduate diploma programs, but also minor awards we've completed. And there's in and around two, over 220 current students uh, on the programs. Student perspective is something that we're going to um, engage with. And our students, uh, like I think one of uh, our earlier presenters uh, commented on, our students are our faculty, they're our colleagues. So we, we have the advantage of having colleagues who um, are continuing engaging with our programmes and with elements of professional development um, modules. And then we also have a very, very big alumni base, which um, typically can be staff working across our partner institutions, but we've also had external people, we've people working in other aspects of education, adult and further education as well, um, who we have access to through our graduate alumni. And their views um, will be um, very, very important to how this, um, this project works. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Deirdre, who's going to talk about the implementation of the project. Thank you, Helen. So this project is uh, designed to run over 18 months, so that's from January 2007 um, to June 2018. Um, it is three phases and these are broadly around the three semesters involved. Uh, the, um, the first phase, which runs from January to June 2017, is broadly project setup and planning and then mapping and consultation. And in relation to that, then, for setup, uh, we set up a project team uh, followed by a steering group. And my colleague, Maura, will go into the details of that in a moment. We need to audit the existing provision uh, around the, the supporting institutions um, and also then agree a mapping framework and an evaluation of that. In relation to the, the mapping framework, we, we don't intend to start from scratch. We're very mindful that there is a consultation document from March 2006, a resource for planning and personal uh, professional development um, consultation document, and that would be a starting point for us. The next uh, thing in this phase then is around mapping and consultation. Uh, and in relation to that, we need to, uh, in the, the individual uh, institutions, complete mapping and find gaps then in relation to alignment. Uh, and in relation to that, uh, as was mentioned earlier, we'll be very much mindful of RPL considerations and also um, digital capacity. Phase two then will run from June to December 2007. Uh, in relation to that, then firstly, there's going to be planning and reflection. That's on an overall basis uh, in relation to all parties and also then on a local basis uh, to form plans. That will lead then into the interpretation and alignment part of the phase. And for that, then we need an agreed vision really of how we're going to interpret uh, the, pr the professional development framework and particularly in relation to individual programme philosophies. Having completed that, then there's the work of actually aligning the provision and that's going to happen then in the individual um, partner institutions. Two minutes left, uh, The final phase then is consolidation and evaluation. We um, are going to have a selection of outputs and the main one in relation to that would be a framework for evidence, professional development, and then with various ideas for sharing and disseminating resources, which uh, we'll go into in a later slide. So I'm just going to hand over now to Maura McGuire. Okay, just very quickly, um, just going to talk really, really briefly about our key stakeholders and our consultation strategy has underpinned the management strategy for the project. So just briefly to identify them, obviously externally and in the sector we have the National Forum, we have Thea, we have Lynn. Key stakeholders then more, more immediately are everyone who has, will or um, is currently taking our provision within our institutes, those staff teaching on these programmes, the wider staff and student body and our institute management. So we are setting up a steering group and the steering group allows us to draw on the expertise of Lynn and the wider sector. All the partner and supporting institutions will be represented there but we also have a student union representative. We, will, we, will have, we have a student union representative who's agreed to, to join that if it's funded. In terms of the more local work, we, I think it's very important to use the, the, um, the, the structures that already exist in our institutes. For example, key committees such as teaching and learning committees 
uh, most of us have those, they have staff and student representation and management representation, so at the higher level they're important in terms of providing guidance. All of our programmes have programme boards with staff, student, management representation, so these will be key in implementing the work on the ground. Um, the student perspective is much more than this and will be drawn on a wide evidence base, particularly Irish survey of student engagement, local data and the projects that many of the institutions are involved in, such as year one feedback project team and so on. We'll be consulting extensively with current students and graduates and the steering committee also represents the wider student body. The steering group gives strategic direction at a high level, whereas the operational level is the core project team and partner institutions. I know this may be how you're feeling right now at this stage in the day, but for us what was really exciting about this opportunity was the chance for us all to reflect on our provision in a really collaborative way where we can align it in a coherent way. For us the collaboration is a really important part of this project for us and was very attractive about it. Um, and just finally, I was going to hand back to Nuala just to very quickly say a word about impact. So we were just asked to consider impact. Um, there are some headings that were given to us by the forum around learning and teaching impact on learners. I think um, we've kind of covered those in terms of, of what, the, what an impact this could have. Um, also, we've identified some areas in terms of dissemination. Uh, we are already currently involved in, a, in, in um, a publication around APD, and then there are other areas in which we can um, we can also, uh, you know, disseminate and also encourage the dialogue, etc. In relation to sustainability, I suppose the fact that our programmes are already embedded within our institutes is is very important, and I think it will be a key aspect for us going forward in relation as well as our our continued relationship with Lynn and Thea. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.